Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Wednesday, September 22nd. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am here with my playing partner, who we have not done a podcast together in quite a while, it seems like, but it's Mr. Andrew Hansen. I know he's been uh, head over heels with footballs flying at him, so uh, how have you been, Andrew? Yeah, exactly. Been busy with the start of football season here, and uh, happy to be back here with a big event, the Ryder Cup. What a way to get back into some golf coverage. And we've been waiting three years for this rematch because of yeah. COVID. But watching some of the coverage here on Golf, Ch golf Channel has really gotten me, gotten the juices flowing. I mean, I'm ready to get out there, feeling the vibes. You know, the players are all into it. Team Europe, you know, making waves with the, the cheese heads and the Green Bay Packer colors. And, um, you know, it's going to be intense and a lot of fun. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I, you know, it's definitely one of my favorite uh, sporting events. I just love the Ryder Cup. It has so much drama and intensity, and uh, this is going to be great. So it's it's uh, officially called the Ryder Cup 2020. So we're still in this COVID world of playing things in 2021 that are stated as 2020, but we'll take it. It's 94 years of of Ryder Cups and. Uh, U.S. has a 26-14 advantage, but the amazing thing is U.S. has been getting its butt whipped four and won the last five Ryder Cups for the Europeans. So I don't know, man. Do you think uh, U.S. has a good shot to break that uh, cold spell? Well, they certainly have the full motivation because, like you said, four of five, they've, all, they've also lost seven of nine going back a little bit further. but. At least it's on American soil. They're the heavy favorites in Vegas. Uh, a lot of guys here have a lot of success on this course. We did that research right before the show. Uh, so they're going to be drawing on that and, and uh, you know, taking the, the, the advantage from the fans that they didn't have last time out in Paris. No question about it. And uh, the, the course they're playing on is Whistling Straits. And as Andrew mentioned, there's been three pre – previous PGA championships played there. So we've had some good American finishes in those. And Andrew will, will touch on those in a bit, but it's in Kohler, Wisconsin up there in Packer uh, country. So we, I'm so we should have had crash Davis do a, a, a guest appearance here with his cheese head on for sure. But uh, whistling straight's a beautiful course. It, it was odd when I saw that it was picked because it's sort of a Lynx course yeah, you would think, why would we want to play a Lynx course? That's what the Europeans are used to, but it's got a different twist to it. It's it's a par 71, 7,390 yards, so it's long, and they've cut the uh, the grass pretty low in the rough, so it's not like you would expect, you know, the target golf of Lynx courses overseas. It's more of a, you know, let guys – you know, like DeChambeau and, and these fellas just smash away at it and get it up there close. And then it becomes a chipping and putting contest really for the U S team. So I think, you know, again, there's, there's gotta be a reason why they're, they chose whistling straights. I think that, you know, that is part of it right there. And we'll see if, if that really pays off for them, but uh, definitely, uh, you know, a little bit of a surprising venue. Um, I also wanted to mention weather uh, that's going to be there. Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the event. They play 36 Friday, 36 Saturday, and then the singles matches are, you know, all 12 versus 12 on Sunday. And Friday looks a little bit shaky. There's a good chance of uh, some rain there, uh, about a 50% chance of showers. So it's going to be soft. You know, they're not going to get the big rollout, but they will be able to shoot at the pins. Um, 73 for a high, only 47 for a low, Andrew. So that's interesting, too. Uh, winds all weekend between 10 and 15 miles an hour. So it's not going to be calm, but it's not going to be, you know, like insane uh, when you play over some of those courses in Europe where it's sustained 30 mile an hour winds the whole time. But it does get better on Saturday and Sunday. So, you know, if you're playing the specific days or how you, you want to look at who's a better player on a softer or harder course, 
Saturday and Sunday should be dry. It'll play a little faster. Uh, 66 for highs between 47 and 50 for lows. So chilly, uh, but you know, should should get it all in, shouldn't be a big problem. So those, you know, that comes into play as well with some of the strategy uh, that these two teams are going to use. Yeah, you know, kind of a mix of information there that we have to dissect in terms of pros and cons. Because I agree yep. with you, you know, I wouldn't have picked a Lynx style course to for this event. But with that being said, they can obviously get the course prepared in a way that's advantageous to the U.S. by cutting that rough short to make it more forgiving for the long hitters like Kepka and Bryson. So in the end, I think it'll be pretty balanced out. And like you said, any sort of weather, I think, favors Team Europe. But the fact that it's not going to be too windy and cold through the weekend, hopefully Team U.S. will, will be able to balance that out and uh, take that cup and keep it here. I hope so. We are due. Uh, I'll tell you, though, it's uh, the amazing thing is just Ryder Cup itself talking about it. You know, Stricker, I know, is one of your favorites and he gets to captain the, the ship. And, you know, it's it's awesome. But then there's a whole different entity in talking about playing DFS for the Ryder Cup. Yes, it is uh, different than anything else. You know, the, first of all, let's just go over that and set that stage. So when we start talking about pricing and who's going to play and what those strategies are, there's definitely some strategic aspects of this more so than if you're playing PGA, you know, at all, because this is just a, a totally different scenario. Uh, first of all, it looks as though there's no Ryder cup play on Yahoo. So we'll be focusing strictly on DraftKings and FanDuel. And uh, I wanted to just give you an idea of this, the point system for both so that when we're talking about these, you know, and every the listeners are, are checking it out and deciding who to play, it may be a little bit different between DraftKings and FanDuel because the scoring is different. So on DraftKings, uh, for a whole one, it's three points. A halved hole is 0.75. Uh, same thing for a lost hole, minus 0.75. Holes not played. So if you close somebody out after 15, let's say, you get 1.6 points for the three holes remaining. So it's a big bonus to, to smash somebody. Um, matches one, you get five points. And that's both guys. Let's say you have two guys playing in a foursome together. They both get the five points for the match one. If a match is halved, it's two points. And then there's two unique uh, streak and bonuses that are going to come into play. If you string three consecutive holes, one in a match, you get plus five. And if somehow you don't lose a single hole in a match, you get plus 7.5. So those could come into play. But then listen to this, Andrew. This is how different this is. FanDuel. If you if the hole is a draw, it, you get 0.75. If you lose a hole, it's minus 0.75. Holes not played bonus for them is also 1.6. Shut out 7.5. So there's there's consistency there. Streak of cons consecutive holes. <clears throat> you can only get one per round, though, and you get a five-point bonus for that streak. If uh, a match is tied at the end, two points, you win a match, five, holes one, uh, each individual hole one is worth three. So it's it's definitely a different strategy, a little bit on how that scoring is going to come in. <clears throat> the bottom line is the key is you need to got, get guys that are going to play the most rounds. There's five potential times you could play, and generally there's only a couple of guys for both teams that play all five. So that is the number one thing. And then second, you want obviously somebody that you feel strong that is going to be able to close out matches in a timely uh, manner, maybe get that streak bonus. And then also those extra bonus points for the holes not having to be played because you close somebody out. So man, it's, you know, finding that the couple dominant players is going to be really the key to winning any of the contests, even cash games. Yeah, and then the the real difference is going to be the fact that DraftKings has six players and FanDuel, you only have five. So yeah. you can't pick three, uh, 
two, three, three pairs of players who are paying together on right. FanDuel. Um, and obviously the price ranges are, are different on the salaries. But um, like you said at the beginning, you know, it's a different strategy here because of the fact that they're playing in pairs for four yep. of the five uh, sessions. So to give people the rundown there, uh, on Friday and Saturday, there's no singles matches. You're playing as a, a, a twosome and you're playing foursomes or there, or then four ball. Foursomes is when you alternate a shot. So I tee off, coach hits the approach, I hit the putt. In four ball, you play your oh, own that, ball. You're saying that I'm going to put the ball on the green? That's your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in four ball, you play your own ball, but you're you're in a match with uh, um, a partner. So best score in the group is what counts towards do you win the hole or not. And then on Sunday, everybody plays the singles. So the key here is Friday and Saturday trying to figure out Who's playing with whom? Who are they playing against? Uh, and you know which team is going to win? Um, so he, I've got four pieces of strategy here, Coach, that I think will really help people get ready for this event. Number one, try to pick your players in pairs that are playing together. And we will get the announcement on Thursday during the opening ceremony about who's going to play with whom, against whom on Friday. So that's all we're going to know for sure. But you want to have your players together. So if Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas are playing together, like you said, if they win the match, they both get the five points. There's an extremely high correlation between those two. They're going to have the exact same score. Now, we don't know if they're going to play together every single session for the whole weekend, but they probably are. And so they the win, research we need the to do. Yeah. yeah. So the research we need to do is try to find out as much as possible which pairings are going to stay together. And who's going to play the most matches? Now, the other unique thing here about the Ryder Cup is that you can take all players from Team US or all players from Team Europe. And in other DFS contests, you can't do that. You always have to get one guy from the other team. Right. But for some reason, that's how this is structured. So, you know, you can keep that open as a potential strategy. Um, but point number three is if you are going to take some guys from Team US and one or more guys from Team Europe, Look at that Friday schedule and make sure they're not playing against each other because right. this is not a situation where you want to say, okay, Spieth and JT are playing Rory and Rom. Let's take all four guys to make sure we get the win. You just don't want that because you're limiting your upside. So you want to pick guys on opposite teams who are not playing against each other on Friday. And then the fourth piece of advice is – getting back to strategizing about who's going to play the most matches. And so if you look at Team US, there's been a lot of talk about Cantlay and Xander Shoffley playing together, Spieth and Justin Thomas, DJ and Morikawa. So let's say those six guys are playing together and they're playing the most matches for Team US. You want to try to figure out, well, who's that next pairing that's going to get one more match? And I think it's going to come down to either Kepka and Finau playing together or Bryson and Harris English. So I think you want to strategize about, do I want to take Kepka and or Finau or do I want to take Bryson and or Her Harris English? So what that comes down to is don't take Kepka and Bryson. And we know that they've been in the, 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 you know, the media here for months with their feud. And so the advice is don't take both of them, not because of that feud, but because I think one of those guys will get an extra match. And if, if let's say, Kepka and Finau are playing, I think that means Bryson is sitting and watching. So you don't want Bryson. Now, that's the cash approach. The GPP approach would be to try to project something unique happening, like Stricker decides, okay, I'm going to put Kepka and Bryson together, in which case you could pick them both and hope that they play together at some point. So that's where kind of the the intrigue comes in and, you know, reading between the lines, watching the press conferences and just trying to project the pairings and, you know, who's going to stick together and where there might be some flexibility where guys could start on one pairing but switch and play together later. Yeah, no, well said. And, and that's really a lot of it comes down to the bottom line is this. Don't make your lineups until you see those initial pairings for the first round of matches on Thursday. So once you see that, th those are announced, they'll, they'll have it on golf channel. The captains announce it and they show it on the board, sort of like they reveal the NCAA pairings. It's 
pretty cool. But once you see that, then you, then you build from there because the bottom line is this. I think to win bigger contests, you have to choose guys that are playing together and then you just have to hope that they win because if, if they're hot, like Spieth and Thomas were last Ryder Cup, then they're going to keep playing them together. They're just going to let it roll and count, hope to count on that point. But let's just say they, they do put those two together and they get drilled on Thursday. They may break them up and somebody may set a match. You just don't know. So the key is going to be give yourself the best chance, like you said, on Thursday with those pairings if you pick the right ones. And at least for me, I'm, I'm going to have a mixture of Americans and Europeans. I think that's really the best you know, dynamic, if you, especially if you want to win the bigger contests. And then just hope the ones that you're picking together – stay together. So with that being said, from everything I've read and looked at, I'm trying to figure out who is the most likely to play all five matches, because that's your first big advantage. From my side, what I feel, and then I'd love your feedback on this, because again, we, we haven't talked this before the show. We want to just talk it all through here. Uh, I think the best chance for playing all five for the Europeans is Rom and Hovland. From what I've heard, I think Hovland might be a great wild card pick that plays all five. Do you have you heard anything on the European side to you know dispel that or agree with it? Well, I did hear uh, Captain Harrington speaking very highly of Hovland and his impact on the team uh, and how he's really involved in the locker room and uh, a welcome addition. So I think it it's possible. He certainly got the game for it. As a rookie, will it happen? I don't know. It may depend on how he starts out. I, you know, I agree with you on Rom. Uh, I think Hovland's got the potential. If depending on how he's playing, I think if I had to make a second pick, it'd probably be, probably be Rory, uh, just because of his experience, yeah. his success on this course. You know, his yeah. stature on that team. Um, and but I do feel like I just in general have a little more clarity on the U.S. side uh, for that one, but. We got to keep grinding here on Team Europe to try to figure that out. Definitely. Uh, the two guys I have at the top of my list for playing all five for the Americans. And again, you know, I'm just trying to narrow it as much as I can because there's a lot of potential possibilities here. And I think Stricker will go with who's hot, too. So he probably doesn't even know for sure who he's going to go with for five rounds. But I'm thinking it's Cantley and Justin Thomas, just because Thomas has always been a workhorse. He's done well. He pairs well. And Cantley's just, you know, the hottest guy right now. I mean, why not ride a guy that's playing with that kind of confidence? And Cantley has that steely, quiet demeanor of, like, focus. And, you know, he's not a guy to ever get rattled. It's the emotional guys that I'm concerned about, you know, that get really into it. I think sometimes that just throws you off your game. But you know, those are the two Americans I'm thinking have the best chance for the five. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. And I would extend it to their likely partners. And it does sound like it'll start out with Cantley and Xander Shoffley uh, based on their success at the President's Cup together. Yeah. And then JT along with Spieth, because of their success in Paris, they went three, three and one together. Uh, so I do think those four are the most likely Americans to play all five matches. Yeah. I think Cantley and Shoffley, Shoffley will be the chalk, If I personally. I think those are the two Americans. I mean, you have a gold medal. You got the FedEx Cup champ. I mean, these two guys are just smoking, and uh, probably the chalk plays. And it's hard. It really is hard to fade them, uh, no question. All right, let's go just even a, a step further with this. We want to – I know this is going to be a little longer than normal, but this is a big event, and if you really want to hit this, you gotta you gotta be able to absorb some of it. So I just I'm going to run by real quickly here, Andrew, just to get you know who you like uh, a little bit and why. I'm going to give you the first six Americans and then the second six Americans. Not and this is alphabetical order. Just throw me out a name or two from each group that you like or you're saying to fade. And then I'll do the same. I know this is catching you on the spot, but sometimes this is the best reactions to do it. So the first six Americans, again, in, in alphabetical order, Berger, Cantlay, DeChambeau, 
English, Finau, and DJ? Well, uh, Cantlay, you know, I love the recent form. So if I had to pick one to play, it might be him. Okay. Um, English, I want to mention Eng English was in that group. His price is 5400 on DraftKings. I know it. And we haven't gotten to the point yet about talking about your captain on DraftKings. But, of course, the difference there is you have to pay up for him, the 1.5x right. price. Again, on FanDuel, you don't. You get 1.5 yeah. fantasy points, but not the higher price. So if you use English as a captain on DraftKings, you can make a lot of other things work. So I like him just for that point. Uh, you know, the thing is, if he's paired with Bryson, then we get back to that whole Bryson Kepka thing. How does Bryson play? He didn't, he didn't have a good start, uh, his first Ryder Cup. So that's where I'm kind of on the fence with English. Yeah. Um, so that's my initial reaction to those six. Do you know who statistically is the best putter of all 12 players on the U.S. side? Uh, is it English? It is Harris English. So yeah. there you go. You know, that that could be a big, big plus uh, and a, a guy that's really cheap. I, I agree with you there. I think I think English is uh, uh, definitely a dangerous play. And as you say, you know, you've got to use that strategic play, uh, you know, spot when you take the one point five X uh, salary guy. And then I'm with you. I like Cantlay. I, I'm you know. I don't know what to expect from Bryson. I do know that, uh, you know, it's, it's feast or famine with him, as we've learned <laughs> on the on the tour at times. So he's a riskier play, more of a GPP. But uh, I'm with you. I, I think just Cantlay is just so locked in right now. I don't care if he's chalk or not. Um, I'm not completely sold, though, Andrew. On, you know me with Tony Finau. I love the guy. He's the nicest player in the world as far as, just a good guy, but he just doesn't finish much. And I know he did get a win in this and that this year, but I don't know if he's clutch enough. I think he's too much emotion uh, at times. And then DJ, I mean, what do you think is going to happen with DJ here? Because that's the one that always gives me indigestion trying to figure out if I can roster this guy or not. Yeah, he's tough. I mean, struggled a lot this season, came on a bit there at the Tour Championship. But he's a good uh, guy to transition to that. Uh, the summary of what happened here at the PGA Championship on this course in 2015. 2015, DJ finished seventh. Yeah. Uh, so I, you, you might as well go ahead and throw, let's throw those stats out now. The, we've had three PGA Championships here, and Andrew pulled up some of the info that the stronger finishes on this course at Whistling Straits. Yeah. So, really, the, the Americans did well, much better than the Europeans. Back in 2015, Spieth was second in that event. Kepka fifth, DJ seventh, Finau tenth. So four guys in the top ten. Europe's best finisher was Rory way back at 17th. Yeah. So advantage U.S. there. That's one reason maybe that contributed a little bit to to why they picked it here. Right. Um, and then going back to 2010, wasn't really much better uh, for for Team Europe. Uh, DJ finished fifth. And Rory did finish third that year, and Paul Casey finished twelfth. So, other than that, you know, you know, Europe didn't have any guys uh, in the top fifty. Um, nice. So, advantage U.S. And so that's the thing with DJ; he's finished fifth and seventh when the PGA has been played here. So he likes the course, and I think he's in better form than he was earlier in the season. So he's on my radar. Yeah, he's always on the radar, but I just never know. You know, he's so tough to figure. All right, real quickly, the other six. Kepka, Morikawa, Shoffley, Scheffler, Spieth, and Thomas. Any jump outs to you there? Yeah, it's the, I mean, Spieth and Thomas are both in there. You know, they really seem to be strong teammates. Yeah. Um, so you've got that going for you versus Morikawa. Again, his form hasn't been great since he won the open championship yeah. and you know he's paired with dj so that team is just more of a gpp play isn't it 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 is man i mean they could get wiped out or they could just crush somebody i know right. that sounds silly but it, it's just those two guys that is a, a definite feast or famine but man if they both get it going oh, that's a tough duo absolutely what's your thought on that on that group of six 
Well, you know, Xander, I Xander's always so tough, man. I mean, he got it done for me in the Olympics, so I'm a little partial. Uh, I just I think he's again like Cantley. I mean, the fact that we have Shoffley and Cantley playing the way they are, and they're both so robotic and controlled out there. They're not emotional. They don't let anything bother them. Man, is that good for the Ryder Cup? I I think Shoffley is is really a go to. And again, Justin Thomas, because I think he may play all five and that advantage alone, you know, it's like getting those extra at bats in baseball or whatever the case may be, or the extra running attempts in football. You know, if you get the guy out there more, that helps. And then, you know, I have a soft spot for Scotty Scheffler. He's my one of my favorite players on tour. And I think I don't think this will be too big for him either. I think he'll step up. My only concern is he may, he will definitely probably sit at least once. So it's uh, it's an interesting, interesting situation. But I think that, uh, you know, it, it can go so many different ways. And I, I think the best plan is to, you know, really get out there and look at that first uh, matchups and see what happens on Thursday to, to help you build that because that'll that'll be a big edge. All right, real quickly on the Europeans. The first six, Casey Fitzpatrick, Fleetwood, Sergio, Tyrrell Hatton, and Hovland. So Fleetwood, I want to mention him uh, because he went 4-0-1 in Paris. Yes, he did. He crushed us. He did, and he hasn't had a great season, but he's in a great spirits. His interview, I was really impressed with his demeanor, his perspective, you know, the fact that he has confidence from from France, uh, his excitement to play in this event, you know, the old, I don't care who I'm paired with when I play, just I'm happy to be here. So I think he's got a great attitude, great confidence. Uh, he's got a good price. Um, and then Paul Casey, uh, you know, another one of the guys we're always talking about here. Always. He's really cheap, though. He's 6,800 on DraftKings. Yeah. So my big question is just going to be who is he paired with and right. who are they playing against? Because I'll consider him, you know, if I like his partner and I like their matchup just because of that 6,800 plus he finished so highly here in the, in the 2010 PGA. You read my mind. Exactly. <clears throat> I've choked up from it. Home and get a drink. But you read my mind exactly. Paul Casey, I mean, it, it's not just because he's cheaper and he's a veteran. I mean, the dude has had a heck of a year. He's finished high in a lot of uh, tournaments. Yep. He's he's a competitor. He's played, had success at this course. I think Casey, as far as value per dollar, may be the best value play on the board. And, you know, again, will he, he'll probably play four of the five. But uh, definitely dangerous. And then I'll mention Hovland again. I just, I'm more than likely going to go there because I think this kid has everything it takes. I think he's going to be a long time a stalwart for the Ryder Cup team for Europe. And I think Hovland shows up to, uh, you know, tonight or uh, in this tournament. Um, the, the guy that I'm a, a little bit fading is, is Tyrrell Hatton. And I play him a lot. I like him, but he's a super emotions on the sleeve guy. And so I'm not sure that that's not going to get him off his game with the crowd cheering and doing the wave and waving the flags. And so, you know, some of the more fiery guys like Hatton, Garcia, Lowry, those guys, that scares me a little bit because in golf, it only takes just a small tick to get you off your, your normal routine. So we'll see how that rolls. All right. The last six, Andrew. Lowry, McElroy, Poulter, another guy that crushed us. Uh, and then Rom, Wiesberger, who we've played some this year, old burnt Wiesberger. And then Lee Westwood, who had a, a resurgence this season. Yeah, I'll just go Poulter. I mean, incredible uh, record here at the Ryder Cup. A couple of these veterans, he and Sergio, have really great records for their career. You know, yeah. Several matches over 500, and there aren't – Many guys in this event who can say that. Lots of rookies on the U.S. side. But Poulter, he's got the experience. He's got the record, the confidence. You know, this is what he lives for as much as any other golfer is this Ryder Cup. And he's a really good price, 6600 So I'm really curious, who is he playing with? So that's 
really what I'm focused in with Team Europe. Who are Poulter and Casey paired with? Uh, I like both of those guys as potential values. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, Poulter, I'm, I've never seen a guy make that many putts as he did in that last Ryder Cup. It was, yep. it was uncanny. 25-footers dropping them like they were two-footers. Yep. And, uh, you know, can he repeat that? We'll see. But obviously, John Rahm's the chalky guy here. And so ultimately, in looking at these, these 24 guys, you know, is Cantley and Rom, you know, fading either one of those guys, especially since they're probably going to play five matches each, that's going to be the tough decision. What What do you think on those two? Is it just plug and play those two and then build around them? Or, or do you, are you going to try to be different? I will probably pick one or the other. And okay. I would lean towards Cantley just because I think there's a good chance they will match up against each other at some point. Right. And I don't, I don't want to go head to head. I want to avoid my opponent. So I think you probably have to pick one of those two. Uh, but again, we have to wait and see, you know, how they set up the, the matches and who's playing against whom. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe it's doable, uh, right. but I would lean towards Canley because I already know who I think his teammates going to be in Xander. And I love the, the combo. I don't know who Rom's going to be paired up with. So, and, and Cantley's yeah. cheaper. So that's why I give you know him the edge overall. And I agree with you hundred percent. I think whoever uh, they put Rom with, if that's a, a really good pairing and they win, I think that's their best chance. I think they need Rom to pretty much run the table yep. if they're going to have a chance. I mean, Vegas has U.S. basically a two to one favorite to win it, which isn't super overwhelming, but it's it's considering we've lost four of the last five, it's sub, you know pretty substantial. But uh, you know that's the interesting part is you know as do you build an equal build, try to hit all the right spots? Do you you know uh, try to play heavier on one side or the other based on who you think is going to win. Um, I mean, who's your overall pick to win the cup? I personally think the USA gets it back. I really do. Yeah, I do too. Uh, They're just so deep top to bottom. I think that's the biggest reason us has that big edge in the odds. And, you know, you mentioned a guy like Scheffler. I think if he's on team Europe, he probably plays more than he will on team us because they're, they're just deeper. So I, right. I'm going to give U.S. the edge to to get this cup. All right, and then the last thing I'll run by it because it's important to know Vegas's feel on this as you're building your lineups. And again, you know these odds will change when we see the pairings. We can't emphasize that enough. You need to see those pairings on Thursday. But Andrew, our our partners at BetUS.com.pa. By the way, uh, we would love to have you join us at DFS Coach Talk. And we are in the middle right now of preparing for this NBA season that is 27 days away. Uh, Andrew and his team with Joe and Crash are crushing NFL. We've got Major League Baseball with a couple of weeks left. And then the playoffs, we're all over that. And then obviously the Ryder Cup and then the PGA Tour uh, also. So you get all of our four sports with anything that uh, any of the memberships that you purchase, you can uh, join us to check us out for as little as $10 for a three-day pass. Or if you're looking for like a full weekend of football, if you join tomorrow, for example, and buy our five-day pass for $19, you get the Thursday night, all the Sunday games, and the Monday night game too with that package. And uh, check us out. i uh, absolutely love to have you. We're on Twitter at DFS Coach Talk. Again, our website, dfscoachtalk.com, where you can sign up for anything uh, membership-wise there. And again, we're unique to a lot of other providers because you get everything once you become a membership. It's You don't have to purchase each sport individually. And if you're watching this on YouTube right now, please take a second to hit the thumbs up, hit that subscribe button in the top corner, that little alarm will give you an alert as all of these podcasts start posting. Uh, Again, all four sports are going to have podcasts, baseball, football, basketball, and golf. So you want to get that alert button clicked so you know that when we uh, post. All right, the Vegas odds from, again, from betus.com.pa. And by the way, Andrew, did you know that if you sign up at betus.com.pa and use the promo code COACHTALK, all one word, no space, 
and you make your first deposit of 149 bucks, you get to use that to bet on all the games if you want to hammer Sunday NFL. And then you get two months free with Coach Talk. And that's going to have so much sports of the four going on, and you get that scot free. So give that a try if you like betting on the games. All right. John Rom is, is six to one to be the highest score from either team in the Ryder Cup. So again, that goes to what we were talking about. Andrew, I'm gonna quiz you, man. We always we've I've missed these quizzes. I don't think you're gonna get this. So I'm gonna go out on a limb. Easy one. Who's the second favorite of all 24 golfers to be the highest score in the Ryder Cup? Um I'm gonna go with Justin Thomas. Oh, you're you're a dog. You are a dog. He is. He's okay. nine to one. I can't believe it. I did not think he would be unless Vegas is also sniffing those five contests. Yep. Because the guy that I thought would be second would be either the guy that's third or fourth. And Shoffley's third at 10 to one, Cantley's fourth at 11 to one. And I'm telling you right now, that is getting some some coach cash 11 to one. I'll take Cantley all day long. Then right with him to go to what you were talking about, Andrew Spieth's 11 to one as well. And that's because I think, I do think everybody's expecting Thomas and Smith Spieth just to be out there the whole entire time. So that's a good look. McElroy 11, DJ 14, Morikawa 16, DeChambeau 16, Hovland 16, that's an interesting one. I may have to uh, put a few shekels on. Uh, Fleetwood 18, Lowry 18, Kepka 20, Finau 22, Garcia 22, Casey 25, Scheffler 28, Poulter 28, Berger 33, Hatton 33, English 40, Fitzpatrick 40, Westwood 60, and Wiesberger 66 to 1. Any shockers there for you, sir? Not really. Um, I'd looked at those a little bit to try to figure out what Vegas was projecting for who oh, so might play. Oh, you cheated on the Thomas thing. Now it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know what quiz was coming, but I, I looked at it to try to get a sense of what Vegas thought for who was going to play five matches. Yeah. And so it it sort of makes sense to me that they're really grouped closely together. You know, DJ and Morikawa back to back in the odds. Yeah. So um, that does, you know, that is, this is one of those occasions where you can use Vegas odds to give you information that's helpful. Definitely. Definitely. So I think that really is key. I mean, keep a, an eye on those odds once those first lineups uh, for the, the matches that are going to be done on Friday post tomorrow, and then you'll, you'll get a feel for, it. but it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's, you know, there's going to be a lot of chalk plays. I get it, but you know, figuring out that one or two guys that can swing it. And, you know, somebody in there could easily go four, no, even if they sit once, you know, and, and get plenty enough points to, to get you over the top. So it's going to be fantastic. And then it's on NBC and on the Peacock. If you, if you got that for the Olympics, um, that's going to be, you know, they're going to cover every shot of everything that goes on the whole Ryder cup. So it should be pretty awesome. Yeah, and jump in with us if you want the full lineups on FanDuel. We'll give a cash lineup uh, hybrid uh, and then the GPP, and we'll give you our core builds on DraftKings to get you going. Absolutely, and we'll be posting those uh, on Thursday night after you know the pairings and everything shakes out. So you have all you know Thursday evening to get those done because they'll they'll tee off pretty early on Friday. So that is it, man. I think we covered pretty much every angle of this sucker. We've been waiting for this for a long time. And, uh, you know, there's there's some great contests on DraftKings. I'll just say it right now. If you really want to, you know, invest in making some big money, I'd say this week with the Ryder Cup, <clears throat> dive on DraftKings. FanDuel's a little lighter. And again, no Yahoo. So, uh, you know, this is the time to get it. Uh, get in there, get those contests scheduled and, and set because some of the big contests will fill there's no question about it absolutely we have plenty of time here on wednesday this will get you started no question all right man any final words that's it thanks for joining us and enjoy the weekend it's going to be an awesome event
It definitely is. And good to do a pod with you again. I, I really do think I, I think it's been a couple of weeks at least. And I don't know if we've had that long of a period, not doing a podcast in like two years. So there Absolutely. you go. And you're in a new location there, getting that all set up. So pretty soon we'll have, we'll get to see that uh, line drive lefty single behind you. We might, I we'll see. Assume. Yeah. I got to get things decorated and organized. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving is fun. There's no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, awesome. I appreciate everybody listening in and really hope that this helps you uh, put some, some major winners together. Uh, we'll be back for all the shows this week, football, uh, baseball, and, uh, uh, always preparing here for for the NBA. So enjoyed it. Have a great one. Enjoy the Ryder Cup. Go USA. And I know we have some members from Europe we ha- that uh, are part of Coach Talk. So we, you know, we hope that they do well as well. Just not quite as well as the USA. But all right. Appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll catch you on the next podcast as we look to crush it in DFS. <laughs>